forest rangers, and campers, what are your unexplainable and downright creepy stories? Part 1. Please help us grow by subscribing our channel Thread Tonic. Account 1. In 2016, my boyfriend, now my husband and I, went camping in eastern Pennsylvania. The place we decided to stop for the night was primitive. Camping was free, no cell service, barely a road, etc. We did encounter two other people. They might not factor into what happened later at all, but they were creepy. So I'll describe them. The first was a woman who had her truck off to the side of the road a little as we drove past. She had the hood open and seemed to be waiting for someone to stop and offer to help. Usually my boyfriend had no problem helping someone, but he said his time something about her put him off. She didn't really seem like she needed help, and usually people who need help look at you hopefully as you approach. She looked like she just expected we would stop. That's what my boyfriend said anyway. I hadn't really noticed anything that strange about her. The next person came when we had chosen a spot and were setting up a fire for hot dogs. I had noticed people drive by a few times, but my boyfriend pointed out each time was the same car, and the man in the car watched us each time he passed. My boyfriend was a little uneasy about this, but we had driven around for a while before finding a place we liked. It had been raining, and everything was muddy, and we wanted the driest sight possible. He could have been doing the same thing. We briefly thought about moving, but the road was muddy too. If he wanted to find us, all he had to do was follow the tracks. There were some other tracks, but not many. He'd only have to backtrack a little to locate us again. He didn't come by another time, so we stayed and spent the several remaining hours before dark goofing off. No one else drove by. Whether or not those two had anything else to do with our experience, the real fear came later. We had gone to sleep in our tent, and sometime around 3 a.m., we were awoken by this very loud noise. I can't describe it very well, or even remember exactly what it sounded like, but my boyfriend said it reminded him of a chain gun revving up. It was also similar to how it would sound if someone recorded a shovel being dragged over gravel and played it over a loudspeaker is another way he described it. He jumped up and looked out the little window but couldn't really see anything. The sound repeated itself another few times. I was too scared to speak, so my boyfriend whispered that it was probably miles off and I should go back to sleep. I didn't question this as I figured loud sounds could be easily heard miles off. After we left, he told me it sounded like it had actually been coming from just down the road, but he didn't want to freak me out. Looking back, I probably should have wondered why he would bother to whisper if apparently the sound was far off. I was still terrified. Every little thing I heard outside sounded like someone was walking around the tent. We laid there for a while longer when finally my boyfriend told me to get dressed because we were leaving. I got, got alarmed by this, and even more alarmed when he unwrapped the machete we had bought just for this trip from its plastic before opening the tent. We quickly packed up and loaded the car. I looked around for footprints that weren't our own, but despite the moon providing plenty of light I couldn't really see. I did point out something my boyfriend hadn't noticed, though, before we got into the car. There was a beer can by our dead fire that hasn't been there before. We didn't even bring beer. While we were driving away, my boyfriend explained that he was nervous someone might have been trying to lure us out, so he didn't think it was a good idea to run from the tent right away. He also half expected to find out gas tank had been siphoned out. But that wouldn't have stopped us because we had a hybrid car. We joked that that would make a funny hybrid commercial. Number of brutal murders avoided by driving a hybrid. Two, we only joked because we were about shitting ourselves from fear and adrenaline even then. The rest of our trip, we only stayed in well-populated campsites or got a hotel. Account two. When I was in the scouts, or rather the local equivalent, legally adult scouts had to do the three feather challenge. One day without food, one day without speaking, and one day and night alone in the woods with only a knife and a tarp, unseen by any human, after which one has to sneak back to the scout camp unnoticed by the sentries and report to the camp master. It was my third day, so I took off, walked for miles through the woods and found the most remote spot in the wildest, most overgrown part of the woods spent a spooky but uneventful night until almost before dawn. 
When I decide to go for a morning swim in the lake right before taking off to go back, I stripped nude and went towards the lake, but noticed a group of guys fishing so decided to go back. Suddenly, the ground underneath my feet caved in, and I found myself submerged up to my armpits in the absolute vilest mass I have ever smelled. It was a pit where Poacher dumped the guts and leftovers of illegally hunted deer, and it fermented for weeks. Imagine the scene. A group of anglers hear some ungodly screaming from the direction of the woods and run there to see if someone needs help. What they see is a teenager-shaped ghoul covered completely in blood and rotten offal who is crawling out of a bloody hole in the ground while shrieking and weeping then runs at them to get to the lake and wash off. Account 3. One of my best buds from college was a geologist major that ended up becoming a ranger in the southeast U.S. Haven't spoken in years, as is the case with age. But I remember about 8.9 years back, he was telling me about an old married couple that he had recently helped out. He had seen them come to the park several days in a row and found out they were visiting from out west, and they had gotten engaged there decades prior. They had been searching for a spot they'd taken pics of where he popped the question but were having trouble. After looking at the pics and figuring out roughly where they were trying to get to, he escorted them in his vehicle, then hiked with them to where he thought it would be. They found it, and he left them there and went back to his station at the entrance. He said he got a weird feeling once he got back and felt like he needed to wait to see them whenever they left. Well. Once it came time to lock up at night, he still hadn't seen them leave, so he reported it, left his assistant to wait at the shack at the entrance, and went back to where he left them. He found both of them lying down, spooning along the bank of the river. Neither were alive. He called the cops, went through the nine yards, and went home. The police were able to disclose to him their identities, but weren't sure anything else initially. Later, he learned that the wife was terminally ill with cancer, and they had both committed suicide by ingesting some sort of chemical, pill combination medley. They just chose to do it where they had gotten engaged at. My bud wasn't torn up about it. He was obviously sad for about them dying, but said that he thought they hadn't asked for help earlier because they didn't want anyone to think they helped kill them. Account 4. My cousin is with the Forest Service in the Montana-Wyoming area, and I decided to go up there with her to literally test the waters. She does hydrology and has to ride out to the middle of nowhere to test streams and snow runoff to ensure no contaminants. So I thought that sounded fun and wanted to do a bit of a tour with her. We were going to have to camp out there for two nights, so we packed up all our gear and saddle bags or saddle bundles and started out. The first day and night was amazing. Beautiful scenery and amazing air quality. It really is so peaceful out there. I love that area and wish I got to go up there more often. Anyway, we started out on the second day and my cousin said, You want to see something weird? Of course I said yes. So she led me on a bit of a side journey into this tiny little ravine. We ended up traveling about two hours away from our actual path we had laid out. At the very end of this fold in the land, she dismounts and tells me to get off my horse too. We tie them up in this gorgeous little clearing and she tells me to follow this tiny wildlife path and bring our little rechargeable radio. It is one of those you can plug in or wind up and it also acts as a lantern if you really need it to. But that kills the batteries quickly, I do, and out in the middle of fucking nowhere, there is a huge coil of wire sticking out of the ground. The wire itself was not weirdly large like some buried transmission wire, but small like 10 or 12 gauge wiring for a house. It trailed off into the brush and trees. So naturally I decided to follow the damn thing out of curiosity. My cousin trails behind me as I do and this wire, after coming straight up from the ground, is strung across limbs of trees then back to the ground. Then it snakes around rocks and finally dead ends into an outlet. That outlet is mounted on the side of a desk. It looks like a school teacher's desk from when I was growing up, with a metal base and a pseudo wood, plastic top thing, no chair, no building, no nothing, just this outlet and this desk. I am staring confused as all hell at this desk in the middle of a forest, when my cousin takes the radio, pulls out the cord, and plugs it into the outlet. That fucker then lit up and started blaring static. 
The wire was being fed from somewhere. Now the place where we were had no road access, no buildings for many miles, and no other people around. And yet, there was a live outlet, weird as shit. No spooky jump scares or bodies, just one lone powered desk in the middle of the woods. I wish I had taken a picture of it. Account five, not a ranger, but was hiking in Andorra with a friend, long story short. We got lost off the trail and ended up in Spain. Found another trail and we're following it, without a map. A while ahead of us, we see a man with two golden retrievers walking in the same direction we are. He looks young and is carrying climbing gear over his shoulder. We're rushing down the trail to catch up with him and finally do. We ask him for help with directions and he tells us exactly where we are and where we need to be, about 12 kilometers away. There's a town with a hotel. He says there's another smaller town about six kilometers away and that he parked his car there. He says he can give us a lift for the last six kiln if we like, but says that he's in a hurry. We are over the moon and so we hike together for a while. The dogs are nice and friendly, running circles around us. We are chatting away to the guy, and he is really nice. But my friend and I are getting tired, and so we cannot keep pace with him for long. The trail bends away to the right, and the man, now a bit ahead of us, disappears behind the bend. We get there a couple of minutes later, and the trail is empty. No man and no dogs even though the trail is a straight run for quite a while and we should have been able to see them. The two of us continue on, alarmed, waiting to hear, see something, or perhaps be murdered by a stranger. Nothing. We get to the town eventually, and from there made it to the safety of the hotel in the next town over. We were completely freaked out by his sudden disappearance, and to this day, we are both convinced he was a ghost. Account 6. X-Ranger here. We had a group of frat boys making way too much noise. We came by twice, and at the second stop, I told them, this is your last warning. Not only is it rude for other campers to be so loud, it's exceptionally dangerous. Everyone knows that the local mountain lions are attracted to loud noises at night, and these ghost cats, as they are called, can creep right up on you without you hearing or seeing them. Whatever you do, don't leave your tent tonight, if you hear anything, don't make a sound. We went back to the station, grabbed the lion pelt from the intern center and the night vision goggles. Head Ranger had to blow what was left of the budget at the end of the previous year. Once they were all in their tents, we crept into the campsite and made fake lion tracks everywhere. We set up the lion pelt propped up over some sticks. The other ranger got out the PA and from a distance started doing fake lion calls. Slowing, getting closer, I pulled the jeep forward like we were arriving on scene and got out, turned on my mag light and illuminated the silhouette of the lion pelt. Because I was moving quickly, the shadow of the lion appeared to me moving. At this point, the frat boys were losing it. Jim, the other ranger, shouted, stay in your tents, followed shortly by, she's coming around at us, and then, there's another one, and finally, let's get the fuck out of here. At that point, we turned off the flashlights, grabbed the lion pelt in the darkness, and jumped in the jeep and sped off. Just after sunrise, they started peeking out of the tents. Nobody was brave enough to get out until about 8.30. When they saw all the huge paw and claw prints everywhere, they really freaked out. Your tax dollar at work. Count seven. I was camping in a campground on the west coast. I have back problems, so when I camp, I sleep in the car. I had the back seat converted to a bench seat and put my sleeping bag there. I cover the car windows for privacy. Early one morning, I hear this rumbling sound. It's loud enough to wake me up. I'm a child of the suburbs, and what it really sounds like is when you push a shopping cart across a really rough parking lot, one with a lot of gravel sticking out of the concrete, then the car gets bumped, hard, the whole car moved, I immediately start unzipping the sleeping bag with the inside zipper, but that's not the quickest process. By the time I get free enough to sit up and look, there's nothing there. But some big animal had walked by, and I love to know what makes a rumbling noise like that. Account 8. Not a ranger, but I lived on the outskirts of a national park in a cabin. It was a four-mile drive from the main road just to get to the property, and we had no plumbing or power. This property was right next to where the park started. To call it the middle of nowhere is an understatement. 
My roommate at the time was interning with the Park Service, but he is a city kid. Every evening at the dead of night, I had been hearing noises in the woods, what I thought was someone walking, but then they'd just stop in particularly overgrown areas of the jungle, so your mind starts to doubt itself. Is it a pig? A cat? Is it just the wind? The cabin didn't have a locking door, and the owners didn't want me to install one, so I began sleeping in my car. Now this is a huge property, and I'd park my car over an acre away from the cabin, and where I was hearing something, I started hearing those footsteps again. I moved out. My roommate, who thought I was bonkers, stayed and still slept there without a locking door. He got robbed not once but twice after I moved out. So he finally put up motion-triggered cameras. There was a man with a long rifle who'd hike up to the property, set up in the bushes, and watch us.